Hello folks, and welcome to Let's Play EverQuest 2. Why EverQuest 2? Well, after Sony's little uh, hacker issues, I had 45 free days for all their MMOs, and I actually quite like EQ2. I don't play it on a regular basis, but I play it once in a while, so um, and it doesn't get much press, unfortunately. I think it's a really good MMO, but unfortunately just a lot of people don't play it, it's kind of, kind of a bad rap, unfortunately, and I thought I'd do a Let's Play on it. Kind of, hopefully, maybe uh, turn a few people on to it. I'm going to break these videos up into sections. Of course, I'll kind of do like my Rift video, where I make a character or two, play through a few levels so that you can see the general gameplay. But I'll also uh, have some videos showing you just how to do trade skills, talking about uh, alternate advancement, things like that. So if you don't want to watch all me just running around doing quests and killing mobs, just go to my channel and look for the Let's Play EverQuest 2 playlist and just look for the title of the thing that you're looking for and just watch that video. And here you could see some of my pre-made characters. We'll go over those later. Uh, this first video is just going to be about initial character creation, uh, websites that you can check, and things like that. So with that said, let's get started. Now I'm going to go over the classes. Again, I don't play EverQuest 2 a lot. This is the first time I've really played EQ2 probably in over a year. So keep that in mind. I haven't played Velius at all. Um, Destiny of Velius is the latest expansion. First of all, one nice thing with EQ2, unlike some MMOs like World of Warcraft, where you had to buy the base game and every single expansion, with EverQuest 2, you just have to buy the latest expansion and you get all the previous expansions and adventure packs. So that's really neat. So all you really need to do is buy Destiny of Velius if you don't if you've never had EverQuest 2, buy that, you've got all the ex expansion packs. At any rate, I did a little research on these classes, and I emphasized a little. Unfortunately, even on the official forums, there's not a lot of up-to-date information. Um, a lot of the posts dropped off, like <laughs> on the very first forum page for each of the classes, you're already looking at posts uh, that are six months plus old. So I'm gonna do these the best I can, Again, my information is not definitive, so please, you know, double check my information. So, you know, on other websites, but this is just to give you a rough idea of what these classes are. Uh, each class is divided into four different archetypes. First, you've got the fighters; these are the tanks. First, you've got the guardian. Now, the guardian is your general sword and board type tank. Now, all through my time of either playing EQ2 or talking to people who played EQ2 or reading forums, this has been pretty consistently, I recall hearing, probably the best tank overall in the game. Again, this might have changed now and then, and it might not even be true anymore, but pretty consistently I hear that Guardian is overall the best tank. This doesn't mean that the other classes can't, but generally I hear that that's the best tank. But again, it doesn't mean the others cannot. Berserker? Uh, the other plate tank class. Now I've heard that, or one of the other plate tank classes, sorry. Uh, I think they can tank with two-handers, kind of like Death Knights. And uh, wow, again, I wasn't able to find a lot of information about it. Um, I think they're more the offensive type class. Uh, they don't really have spells. Or it's all special abilities. And from reading the description, it sounds kind of like. They would get their abilities from however many mobs are attacking them. Again, it's kind of under hard to understand. If you want to read up more on these classes, I'll be giving websites you can uh, check more check for more information about them on the web at the end of this video, and I'll give links. Uh, also, if you look below the video in the info, I'll have links. Now, the monk. The monk is different than the EQ1 monk. So, if you come from EQ1, it's a little different. They can actually tank. Um, I know there was a short time in EQ1, and in tight situations in EQ1, they could tank. They're actually designated as tanks in EQ2, and I've heard they can even tank raid content. Obviously, they are meant as um, avoidance monks, and other, or, I mean tanks. They're not supposed to get hit. Uh, they wear, you know, light armor. 
uh, mostly hand-to-hand -hand type damage. I think they also use staves, things of that. Obviously no blades. But uh, one of my classes, in fact the class I'm going to make today is going to be a monk. Because I know a lot of people like monks. So that's what I'll be making today. Bruiser is supposed to be a lot like the monk. But more offensive if you can if that makes any sense I believe the uh, bruiser is supposed to be more mitigation based and slightly less avoidance other than that everything I'm read reading monk and bruiser very much alike shadow knight I have a shadow knight a 70 something XR or um, Sarnak shadow knight I love my shadow knight a lot but from what I'm hearing everybody has a shadow knight so if you plan to make a character and play him up to max level and get into groups and raids all the time, Shadow Knight might not be your best bet because apparently everybody has a Shadow Knight. But if you want to just play and have fun, I absolutely love my Shadow Knight. They are a hell of a lot of fun to play. They solo like, like a boss. They also can AE very well. They're just a hell of a lot of fun to play. Paladin, again another plate tank, um, similar to the Shadow Knight. Uh, they focus more on defensive as opposed to offensive, of what obviously the Shadow Knight would be. Paladin can do uh, more group buffs and heals, things of that nature. And before I go on, one thing I had meant to mention earlier: some classes are evil or good only uh, in EverQuest 2. You can be good, evil, or neutral. Some classes are neutral or evil or good. Obviously, you can't be a good Shadow Knight or an evil Paladin. Most classes will fall, I believe, in the you know neutral range. It doesn't matter. But this, depending on, like you can't, let me say this right. If you choose an evil class or an evil race, as we'll get to that in a minute, this limits what cities that you can start in. Not a big deal, but something to keep in mind. Also, your choice of good and evil does not limit who you can talk to and who you can party with as far as other players. So unlike WoW, it's not like Alliance versus Horde where, well, if I choose Horde and my friend chooses Alliance, well, we can't be in the same guild or the same group. If I, if I choose an evil Shadow Knight and my friend plays a good Paladin, we can still you know, group up, talk to each other, even be in the same guild. It doesn't matter. It just matters as far as what cities you start in, all that. With that out of the way, let's go to Priests. Start with the Templar. This is your typical healer type, plate wearing class. Templar is supposed to be, again, going for the information I could find, which Again, I can't really stress enough how difficult it was to find solid, up-to-date information. There might be some hidden forum up there that has good, up-to-date, well-rounded info. I couldn't find it. Uh, the official forums were had old info. but So again, I apologize that I don't have up-to-date info, but it is what it is. Anyway, Templar, from what I'm reading, very good healer class. One of the best healers in the game. If you want to heal and be damn good at it, Templar is the way to go. Apparently they have, you know, pretty good damage as well, so they can still solo okay. Inquisitor, this is the kind of mirror class, and also too, and I, I should have mentioned this earlier as well, you'll notice a lot of these are mirrors, like Templar and Inquisitor, they're kind of mirrors, like the Inquisitor is kind of the evil Templar, or the Templar is a good Inquisitor. There, a lot of times those classes are very similar. Not always, but a lot of times they're very similar, at least in principle. Sometimes not, and I'll try to point that out. Inquisitor also heals, but they're more offense-based. offense, offense based. And again, from my reading, Inquisitor basically gets in there, mixes it up with a two-hander, and actually does pretty good two-hander damage, and does pretty good healing, not as good as a Templar but good enough to heal for groups and things of that nature. Warden. Um, I honestly wasn't able to find a lot of information for Warden. They're supposed to be, again, healers 
focus again focusing more on protection as opposed to damage I believe they're doing okay I wasn't able to find a lot of info on them doesn't mean they're not good but I think of them more as if you played EverQuest 1 they're druids they can do wolf form things of that nature they focus on instead of I think direct heals I think they focus a lot on um, heals over times things of that nature the fury is again more of the evil more offensive version of the warden cast uh, direct damage spells they also heal but again they're more damage based keep in mind all of these classes pretty much in EQ2 can solo pretty well just because it's a healer class doesn't mean it can't solo one thing I've read pretty consistently is outside of a few exceptions pretty much all classes can solo good enough are obviously some classes are gonna solo better than others that's just a fact of life but overall you're not gonna pick a class and just be stuck looking for groups all the time or you know stuck with tons of downtime trying to kill one or two mobs and waiting five minutes or, or whatever like the whole days mystic it's kinda like a shaman from EQ1 I think uh, it's kind of the the good uh, sh shamanistic type class um, again both mystic and defiler which I'm about to go over couldn't find a lot of info on I my understanding is mystic is doing really well right now they heal very well uh, I don't know much about their damage capabilities but I did hear they their buffs and their healing in particular is very good right now so again if if you're looking for kind of a different type of healer instead of a Templar mystic might be the way to go defiler again more of the evil type they twist spirits to their will instead of working with them so kind of the evil slant to the shaman focus more on damage but again they can also heal I heard a lot of negativity about defilers I mean no matter what you're always going to hear about negativity when you go to internet forums that's just the way it is but it was pretty consistent on defiler so take that as you will I've heard they can solo okay I've heard their at the higher levels I've heard their damage isn't very good solo but lower levels they might do okay honestly I'm I'm not sure I haven't played one now we get to the mages mages are obviously your cloth wearing ranged casters wizard wizard is going to be your focusing on single target spells mostly casting uh, arcane spells uh, fire spells things of that nature pretty straightforward my understanding is they do very very good damage one of the high DPS dealers in the game warlock again another very high DPS dealer in the game my understanding is warlock I think focuses more on AE spells so if you're fighting a lot of uh, area effect or a lot of monsters at once warlock is very good for that but it's kinda again kinda the more evil-ish version of wizard I'm not it doesn't say in the description if if it's considered flat out evil like I don't know if you can be a warlock in a good city it doesn't say I don't think that's the case I think it's I think that's the case with necromancer which we'll get to but I don't think so with warlock illusionist illusionist and coercer from what I could tell these two are very similar illusionist let me see if I can remember this correctly illusionists and coercers both are support support um, they both help regen your party's power and in EQ2 you don't have mana or an, an energy everybody uses power instead of mana or, in, mana or energy which makes things a little simpler illusionists and coercers in, in, in a group and raid settings help to kind of feed that they kind of heal power instead of healing health to heal power they both focus on that illusionists help build that up by doing DPS coercers help build that up by casting you know buffs and actual targeted spells so it's just different methods of doing the same thing illusionists also have 
buffs which focus on buffing pure casters. Coercers have buffs focusing on buffing melee. Other than that, I think they're mostly the same. Again, you might there are probably some other differences, but uh, obviously, and again, uh, here Coercer is the evil version. Illusionist is the good version. I again, I I believe some of this good and evil differences. I'm not 100% sure on, so I apologize about that. Conjurer, that is kind of like the mage of EverQuest one, and I'm going to make several allusions to EQ one because I'm kind of assuming some of you came from EQ one, but I'll still try to be pretty clear. Um, Conjurer. You summon pets, like elemental type pets. You're, from my reading, that the pets can be different types. You can have like a mage pet, or a rogue pet, or a healer type pet. But it's uh, an elemental type as well. My, uh, From my what I'm reading, unfortunately several of those pets are kind of broken or not very useful in a lot of situations. Um, but still, Keep in mind, a lot of people only talk about the high end, so while you're leveling, they might all be useful in different situations. But Conjurer, again, focuses mainly on having various summonable pets and nukes from range. Necromancer, obviously, same deal, but you're going to focus on summoning undead type pets. But it's the same deal where they can summon mage type pets or tank type pets, things like that. But I believe they have. They don't focus as much on the pets. I think conjurers get more buffs for the pets. Nec necromancers don't get as much. Necromancers, I've heard, are very good at are very good with survivability, and they're just supposed to be a lot of fun to play as. I'll I might actually play as a necromancer as well in this let's play, just so I can play you know as a melee and a caster to kind of get you both views. But scouts, we have Swashbuckler. That is the goody two shoes version of a rogue, which I've always thought is kind of a funny way of looking at things. But anyway, um, you know, I, I don't quite understand what a Swashbuckler does. It's kind of a. It is a melee class. They don't. I don't think they have things like backstab. Maybe they do. Like I said, I, I wasn't a hundred percent clear on that, uh, on what they do. I think they're, from my understanding, though, they are a good class. So you might want to research a bit up, bit more up on that. It's don't be get it confused with the assassin, which I'll go over it a bit later. Uh, and again, I apologize for the lack of information, but I'm I'm blanking on what they did. Brigan is another class I heard a lot of negativity about and again it was pretty consistent it, it wasn't the general one person one or two person whining consistently about oh my class is broke no matter how good it is this was pretty consistent whining or not whining but complaining across the board Brigan in from what I'm reading is they trade DPS for debuff debuffs but in raid settings, apparently there's caps, and these debuffs are pushing past those caps. So you're just not bringing any real benefit to the raid. Now again, if you're just playing to play for a while, or play with friends, or duo with someone, who cares? Pick something that sounds fun and run with it. But if you're going to play something in the wrong one, you might want to consider that. Troubadour and Dirge. They're both bard types. Uh, they, These two classes are kind of the exception to the rule what I was talking about earlier when it comes to soloing. I've heard both of these can be difficult to solo with. Uh, I've heard Dirge is easier. Troubadour is a bit harder. However, I've also heard that they are both very, very desirable for groups. Um, almost to the point uh, as almost as desirable as healers and tanks. So if you really want to get groups and don't mind consist, you know, sometimes doing a little bit harder time with your soloing, Troubadour or Dirge might be something you want to look at. Troubadour, 
I heard mixed results. A lot of people were complaining about them, but a lot of people said, you know, if you really know your stuff with Troubadour, you can you can make a big difference. Again, please keep in mind these are both support classes. You will not be doing max, you know, um, insane DPS or anything like that. These are support classes. You help other classes excel. Um, but just keep that in mind. Uh, other than that, I really don't know the difference between the two, to be honest. Uh, I think I think it's kind of the same thing as with the Illusionist versus Coercer. I think Dirge might buff uh, Melee and Troubadour buffs Casters. I'm not honestly. I don't know the difference. Roughly, they're about the same, but relatively consistently, I heard Dirge is either a little bit better or at least easier to play. But both are very, very, very desirable for groups, from what I've heard, and raids. Ranger is a uh, ranged, ranged melee, as some people will call it. Uh, basically, a ranged class that doesn't cast actual spells. Um, that's pretty much all you need to know. Uh, I mean, about rangers, I think they have sneak... Um, and honestly, I even forgot to look up information because I thought, okay, ranger, that's pretty obvious. But, yeah, it's a ranger. Uh, they might have... I don't even know if they have heals, to be honest. Yeah, I totally dropped the ball on that. But, yeah, rangers. They're rangers. Assassin. Now, this is pretty much my understanding your typical, what you're thinking of, an EQ1 or a WoW or pretty much any other game rogue with the what I would think would be the backstabs and the stealth and all that. I believe somebody was saying they have the highest melee DPS in the game. So keep that in mind. But that's all the classes. For starters, I thought I would go with a monk. Because again, not many MMOs have monks. I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. And I'm going to go through the races here semi quick now you have again you have good neutral and evil races again this dictates where you can start what cities you can start in but again does not dictate who you can group with now, first you have the dwarves and, bef and also before I go on you do have racial abilities I'm not going to go into each of the racial abilities if you want to know them. Um, there's a Wikipedia site that I'll, I will link to so just check that out. I just don't want to waste a lot of time going over each of the racial abilities. Uh, honestly, I don't... I personally, I don't think they make enough difference to base my class on it. I just basically... I personally just think what's a good combo in my mind and I go with it. I'm just kind of like that. But, oh, another really cool thing about EverQuest 2, which I love, is that any race can be any class. So you could have a troll bard or an ogre wizard or something like that. So that's that's a really neat thing about EQ2. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that still holds true. But let me go through the races real quick, and I'll give you a just a quick glimpse of what they look like. First, there's the dwarf. And you'll notice a lot of these have alternate appearance. By default, they have more of an Asian look, uh, or an Asian art style look, I should say. Not to get into it, but there was the original models, which looked like this. Uh, that's the quote-unquote alternate appearance. And then um, I guess they had a studio in Asia do models that was, which this is the Asian version, which almost everyone liked better because quite frankly the American models were awful um, I'll quickly show you some of them I guess um, but I'm not going to bother going through all of them they're pretty horrible uh, let's be honest, yikes <coughs> see I almost threw up in my mouth but yeah there's the dwarves the fey no matter I, a lot of guys like to play fey I'm you know, not gonna judge. Obviously, the ladies love Fey, and that's another thing I've noticed as I'm going through. Here's a frog lock. There's one thing I've noticed about um, Halfling going through um, or playing EverQuest 2. 
a lot of women play Half-Life 2. Half-Life 2. EverQuest 2. Um, I, I don't know what it is in particular that attracts... That's Half-Elf. I'm sorry, that was High Elf. This is Wood Elf. Uh, Wood Elf is, you know, obviously the more hippie type elf, even though that really doesn't look like it. Half, high Elf is kind of the more hooty tooty elf. But yeah, a lot of a lot of women. Here's Barbarian. I'm trying to have two conversations at once. A lot of women uh, play EverQuest 2. Like I say, I haven't quite figured out what the what the draw is. Like what it what what it kicks, I guess, is the word. Yurdites. Interesting look. I really don't like the way they look. Too alien. The Kara. I don't like the way they look in EverQuest 2 either. The females are okay. These are the furries wet dream. Obviously. Free blood. I've actually never even noticed that. That looks like a purchasable race. I'm not sure what the... Looks like some kind of vampire type looking thing. Gnomes. Gotta have your gnomes. Half elf. That's another race I can never quite understand. Why play a mutt? Why why would you want the mutt race? A lot of people like them though. Human. And this is definitely the type of game I would never play human. Just because there's so many awesome races. When it's like Aeon, where you've got four races to choose from and two of them are human, it's like, well. Rotonga. I love Rotonga too. The rat race. Eh, rat race. But yeah, I love Rotonga. They have the cool little monocles and glasses. Ah, Rotonga are awesome. Now we go. Those were the neutral races, and now we're on to the evil. The Arasai, I think I'm pronouncing that right, is the evil fairies, which they're still fairies, so there you go. Their wings look cooler, though, I think. But, again, still fairies. And by the way, when I was saying, this is Dark Elf, by the way, when I was saying that this game draws more women, that wasn't meant as a negative, I was just saying factually, that this game just seems to draw more women. Ixar. Good old classic EQ Ixar. I think that I think they did a good job with the Ixar. I think the females look really good too, actually. I think that they did a good job there. The Ogre. The Ogre is... Oh, that, that's an awesome hair. Because these are choosing these at random, by the way, when I pick one. So... The alternate appearance ogres actually aren't bad. I don't think. That's the Asian version, and this is the original. I don't think the original are, are too bad. Sarnak, wow, something happened. <laughs> the head's way too big. But I love Sarnak, too. Sarnak are awesome. Those were introduced originally in EverQuest 1. Sarnak are one of the few races where the females are bigger. And Troll. Troll's also one of the few times that I think the original... Oh, no, wait, never mind. I'll take it back. Because I was going to say they had different... Ooh, that's a sexy woman. Look at that. Look at that. Yikes. Kind of missed the original EQ1 Trolls and Ogres. But anyway, that's all the races. Again, they all have their different perks and whatnot. Not going to go over them, but we're going to go with Ixar. We're going to go with the old, original classic Ixar monk. Now we're just, I'm not going to bother going through the different things here. I just want to show you just real quick. You can change head, eyes, chest. You can, you know, change your crest and all that. You can actually change the scale pattern. There's a few different ones. We're just going to randomize until I get one I like. That looks good. 
Now, I have two choices because I'm um, a Ixar. I can either do Gorowin, which is the Sarnak city that was in, included with, started with Kunark, or I can start in Nariak, which uh, was introduced not too long ago. That is where the Dark Elves are, and that's actually where I'm going to start, and that will be the next video. Um, so before we begin, I kind of wanted to go over a few other things real quick about EQ2. Now you have five starting city options, which uh, two of them I just went over. Another one is Freeport. It's the other evil city. I don't know why I actually don't have the option to start in Freeport, um, but that's an evil town as well. There's Kinos, which is a good city. There's um, also Kelethan, which is a good city uh, as well. It's in the trees, and I believe the um, the fairy type races can start there. Um, let's see a few websites. Again, I'm just going to mention these real quick. I'll have links below. Uh, there's a Wikipedia. There's two different Wikipedias. There's EQ2. WIKIA.com. There's a uh, Zam um, has one EQ2.ZAM.com. Another site I found, a great site for quests. Well, those are good for quests, but another really good one is EQ2.Fluffy.DK. Another great one. You can search for the quest you're looking for, and it has information. There, uh, some of the forums, the official forums, are okay for information. They have newbie forums, great for asking newbie questions. Very helpful people there. Um, the site is forums.station.sony.com/eq2. And another great site that you'll absolutely want to bookmark is eq2.zam.com slash wiki slash the underscore golden underscore path and I'll go over that a bit more but basically that's the quote unquote optimal leveling path for the new zones that's going to be where you want to go for your leveling just for the best items for the best XP and things like that um, also, the last one, eq2interface.com, where you can get custom interfaces. I'll go over that in a separate video, how to use them and whatnot. Another important thing before you start, and I should have mentioned this at the beginning, do not use the station launcher. I made that mistake to begin with. Go to the eq2 site. It's launch.soe.com slash eq2 that's launch.soe.com slash eq2 get the eq2 streaming launcher because the i don't know why they haven't taken it off or given you a warning but the station launcher doesn't work anymore it gives you an error when it's trying to check files it didn't mention that until after it had downloaded like 13 gigs i got it to work without too much trouble but it was still kind of a pain in the butt but anyway that is about all we had to start with for the first video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have questions or comments, leave them in the fields below. I'll try to answer them best I can, or hopefully other people might be able to answer them better than I can. And look to other videos. And um, again, if you have any requests for spe specific classes or areas you want me to try to hit up, just let me know, and I'll try to cover them. And I hope to see you next time.